There are two ways uh, to plant objects, 2D objects on your course. Uh, one is singly and the other is to forest plant them. So we'll go over both methods. If I go to planting and up here, this leaning over tree here is our plant command. So if I select that, I can now plant an object just by clicking on the screen, either in the overhead view or in the perspective view. Uh, you can do this. So if I just find a spot by this bunker, let's put my camera down so we can see what's happening. Providing I've got the uh, 2D objects displayed, which sometimes I haven't. So yeah, they're displayed there. Check in the top view as well. Yeah, we'll see the planting. If they weren't ticked, obviously, nothing would happen. Although it would plant the object, you wouldn't be able to see you'd planted it. So if I just click somewhere here, lo and behold, a tree appears. Um, I'll undo that and if I wanted to directly click on this screen again I can plant just by clicking the mouse on the screen and the height of the items is determined by the settings we made in the minimum and maximum settings you can adjust these on the actual planting screen they're down here and there's also a lock button if you want just one set height so if you were planting something like ball washers for instance you'd want them all to be the same height so you would tick the lock button and just set the size you wanted in this box here and every time you planted it they would be the same height so I'll just demonstrate that so go five feet lock then every tree I plant is now five feet tall so that's how simple planting objects is singly. Uh, one of the mistakes you can make though, uh, and I certainly did when I started, was I would plant a tree and then I would select it using the, the button and I would flick through to different trees to find one I liked. And what I didn't realize was if you just do this and change the tree like that, what you're actually doing is creating a steel tree. You're also destroying the shadow of the tree because that's connected to the top view. It's the top view of each object that creates the shadows. And although it appears that tree has now changed, it hasn't changed correctly and been updated. And if we look at the overheads, if we see this overhead of the tree here, if I change the item, let's select to another tree. In fact, if I even change it from a pine tree to, say, a cactus, what you'll notice is there's no top view showing. Oh, actually, cactus probably doesn't have a top view, so let's, <laughs> let's select a tall tree just to be sure. Um, so I'll select a tall tree, but you'll notice nothing's appeared here on the overhead for the top view. So what we need to do is use the update button. If I click update, uh, we're up with tree 174, if I do select, because we're on 174 in this selection screen here if I click update update currently selected images it's now updated it although you didn't see a change there over here the overheads appeared and it's now updated properly and will behave as a normal tree so if I just I don't know ever no undoing it won't actually undo the the update so I can't show you the before and after again. Uh, but now that tree will behave as it should in its properties uh, with its correct trunk and, and leaves. 
so that's um, an easy beginner's mistake to make I was doing it with grasses and I was just selecting the grasses um, a certain grass in fact I'll just show you if you look down here there's box select current only so that will only select a certain type so if I want to select this tree here which is pine tree 45 if I now tick box select current only I can highlight all of the trees together I was doing this with my grass because I hadn't got the look of the grass I wanted I was selecting a grass and then changing it to a different grass by just doing that clicking another one and thinking that all was well and all my grass was steel and the ball was ricocheting off it all over the place and I couldn't for the life of me figure out why I had steel um, plants because I looked in the grasses and the, it was set to pass through correctly uh, and it didn't make any sense but this is what caused it just selecting items selecting objects on this screen changing them by just clicking uh, to a new one and not updating the currently selected object afterwards so always update this currently selected object it doesn't have to be highlighted on the screen you don't need to highlight all the things you've selected um, when you click update as long as it's highlighted here it will update that cut that is the currently selected one it will update it so quite an important one or you'll end up with steel plants all over your course or you'll end and you'll also end up with trees without shadows um, as well so if you happen to be playing your course and you notice some trees are missing shadows and yet they're assigned in the properties here if they've got a shadow here but they're not showing up on certain types on your course it's probably because you've forgot to update and those trees are going to be steel so that's that's quite an important thing to be aware of now the other way of planting uh, which is much quicker and good for larger areas is the forest plant and also for grasses uh, and this involves creating a shape on your course and you can just fill it with the plant you want so we've got a if I just delete these for now I think uh, let's turn that current only off so it will pick them all up click delete and this up here is the forest command which is next to the plant in so if I click that now what this will do is fill any selected shape so you need to select the shape once you're on the forest command by clicking on it and you'll see it go slightly brighter uh, some colored shapes very difficult to see it will probably depend on your monitors as well as to how easy it is to see that but for me it's not distinct enough they should have done a better job with the APCD than this because sometimes you can't really tell whether you've selected it or not but if you click on and off usually you can see the brightness change enough to realize you have got the correct one selected so once it's selected you'll see down at the bottom here we've got plant forest and there's also feet squared area command that you can set the density of the trees too so if I leave it on 30 feet squared for now and click plant forest it's now planted that tree uh, every 30 foot randomly but and it set them to the heights that were defined by the minimum and the maximum which we can obviously alter now what you can also do uh, with this while you're on forest is delete a percentage of uh, things you've planted as well so if we wanted to reduce we've planted too many trees we want to reduce it to maybe half if we click on the delete key while we're on the forest command the currently selected shape uh, will act as an eraser and we can set either all objects or just the current object we're on which in this case doesn't matter because we've only got one object and we can set how many we want to delete so if we wanted to delete them all we can set it to 100% if we wanted to thin it down to half the trees 
If we set it to 50% and click OK, it's pruned out 50% of the trees from that particular shape. Now this is a very good command, but I had a lot of problems with this when I was designing my first course, and I found that if I used it a lot, eventually it would just crash the uh, APCD and I'd get these consistent error logs. I can't remember what it said, but it was one of the exception errors and it would instantly just crash my APCD. So I would use this sparingly. I mean, it might have just been a problem with something I'd done on that course, but I can't be sure. And I've steered clear of this using this uh, ever since. What I tend to do if I want a thinner tree, if I've just planted them, I just go back uh, to before I plant them. So I would undo the forest and I'd just reforest it. If I wanted 50%, I would increase the area and replant that way. I get a thinner spread of plants without the risk of the crashing that I had using that uh, selective delete, but it is a very good command. Uh, so I wouldn't say don't use it, it works really well, but I can't guarantee the stability of APCD if you use it a lot, uh, so be warned on that. One thing I do tend to do uh, when I start a design early on is just plant one tree in my uh, areas where I want the woods to be. I'll just plant a single tree so that I can test out the course because it, it obviously isn't going to play the same uh, if you test your course with no planting on than it will with the trees because they're obviously ob obstacles that you've got to go around uh, and they'll affect the view from the tea to green as well. So to get a good idea of how my course is going to be, I tend to pick a tree uh, and I'll forest plant in one tree around the whole course. So I would, for this course, it's going to be conifers. So I would select my a basic conifer. I'll go back to 30 foot and I'd, uh, oh, I'm locked on five foot for those. Sorry, undo. Let's turn that lock off. Um, and as I said, I would want them a bit more uniform for this course. So in the 10 to 30 range. So I would go around and forest in areas of just a single tree. If you do forest in multiple trees, um, there's a chance that they will be planted unnaturally. So obviously if I forest in a different tree now at 30 foot, there's a chance it might plant one right next to another tree, which it wouldn't grow that close to another tree in real life. So you can end up uh, if you forest in multiple trees like this by um, having very unnatural planting where three or four trees could be growing out of the same place so what I tend to do uh, although it's slower I forest in once I've got my single tree in later on when I want to um, add the other trees in I use the single trees and I go around and select uh, the trees I want if I go on to select I would select certain trees it's easier if you're overhead to pick them individually, but I would select individual trees around uh, my single tree forest, and I would use this method of of changing them, remembering, of course, to update the currently selected so I don't end up with steel trees. And that way I can switch them out, but they're still naturally spaced uh, around my plot, I won't end up with two trees in one place. 